Most phone astrophotography looks amazing online. You get bright stars, you get deep blacks, you get nice, nicely saturated colours through different elements of the sky, and it's accessible to anybody. But if you've ever taken photos with something like this, just a regular DSLR or mirrorless camera, with a reasonably good lens on there, or you've seen images online, you go, what is going on with the phones? Why can't my phone replicate that. There is a growing belief out there that phone photography for astrophotography is all it and a bit. And I want to show you tonight the main difference between this and this. I want to show you the cost benefits. I want to show you the end result benefits of this over this. But more importantly, I want to show you why just doing it matters more than the gear that you have. This here is uh, what I've used for Astro for a long, long time. It's a Sony a7R 3 It's got a Tamron lens on it, it's a f2.8 lens. It's not a super fast lens. It's not even a lens that's meant for astrophotography, but it does a pretty darn good job, I think. You can buy better rigs. You can buy less advanced rigs, if you like. The noise elimination on this is pretty impressive, and it's a 50... I think it's 52 megapixel sensor on this, so it can it can print very large. And, and those two things alone is what makes this better than a phone for astrophotography. The downsides of these, using this, is that one, it's a dedicated platform, it's not your phone. Um, so you've got to go out and invest money into something that is specifically for doing this type of photography. Two is that there is it's all 100% manual setup. There is no app. There is no single, single put it on a tripod, push a button and rob it your mother's brother. There's a lot more work that's involved in this. There's a lot more technical knowledge that you need to go from a phone to a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. In saying that, they've become much more achievable for many people because they are getting... I guess easier and some phones like um, some of the Olympus cameras for example have got some pretty creative things that you can do straight off the bat um, uh, that are similar to a phone like with things like light painting and star trails things like that then when we look at a phone a phone is ballpark uh, 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 a flag a flagship phone these days brand new off the shelf is about the same sort of money you're going to pay for the body of a camera, a reasonably good camera. If you come down a few tiers um, in DSLR or mirrorless cameras, you're going to buy a whole setup for what one of these things costs each year. So if you didn't upgrade your phone one year, you could just go and buy one of those. The main difference is there's a lot more, well, one, this is accessible for everybody. Everybody carries a phone. Doesn't matter what phone you have, they're all going to be reasonably good at doing this if your night sky is dark enough. And that's the key thing with Astro, with phones, you need to have a dark sky. Two is that there's a lot of computational photography in this. This is as simple as, for most cases, and regardless of phone, putting this on a tripod, setting it there, pushing a button, and job's done. It will go away and it will take in the case of um, in this one here, we've got an astrophotography mode. It shoots for three minutes. And over that three minutes, it takes a series of photos, stacks them all together so it lines up the stars nicely behind each other so you don't get uh, unfocused stars. You get some good exposure, so the good brightness through the image. That's what it's meant to do. So um, you, you're already, it's already doing a lot of the smarts for you on the phone. On, on something like an, uh, an iPhone, it's doing the same sort of thing. And even with the iPhone, it adjusts the focusing through that photo as well. So things in the foreground will be in focus, things that are in the distance will be in focus. And that is something that's just not achievable on a DSLR. You have to do all that sort of stuff much more manually. With both setups, your knowledge of the night sky is kind of the same. You need to know what's where and what's where when. You need to avoid things like the moon coming up. as like a very small amount of moon coming up at the moment. You need to understand where things are in the night sky at different times of year. And that's the same for both levels of photography, uh, for, for, for both types, as in DSLR and phone. I'm not talking about the people who go, I've just bought this new phone, I'm going to go put it on a tripod, point at the sky and take a photo. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who are chasing specific objects in the sky, whether that's the galactic core, Orion, all Magellanic clouds, whatever the situation is. 
if you're chasing something specific, the knowledge base is the same across. The main difference is one, the resulting image, and I'll show you that in a second, because it is vastly different. And two, um, you need to understand how to drive this sort of thing versus pushing a button on an app. We'll talk about the phones for a little bit because they're all, they're all basically the same. Every year, new phones come out every year, creators get out there and say this is so much better than the last one but in reality i think with astrophotography especially we've kind of hit a plateau as to what phones can achieve because physics is real it does exist and there's no way you can get around it phones will generally try and get around it with that computational photography firstly phones hate noise they hate digital noise if you go and take a photo at a kid's birthday, go and take a photo in good light. The, the, the level of noise out of a phone is amazing. It's so impressive. It really uses that computational photography to suppress the noise heavily. And in dark situations, like low light situations, it does it effectively very well. However, with astrophotography, when there is no light, it can introduce things to the image like artifacts. iPhone is kind of known for doing that. I can look at a, most people doing this for a while can look at an iPhone photo or look at an astro photo from an iPhone and recognize it's from an iPhone. So as you take photos with a phone, with an iPhone, for example, you will see the stars aren't quite as perfect as they should be. That's because of that heavy noise reduction that it does. And like I say, it will introduce some sort of artifacts. Many times, especially when it's very low light, the sky will kind of look a bit plasticky. That's the best way I can describe it, from an iPhone versus a DSLR. Lastly with phones is that it assumes the white balance. It assumes the color of that image. It's going to think, this is the way this person wants to take this photo, there's your photo. And you don't really get a lot of change in that. Sure, with many phones these days, you can shoot raw. It's not really a true raw, but they do give you the ability to change all that white balance after the case. It's important to note that none of that is random. It's all very intentional. And it's done this way because of the physics that play part in this. We've got a sensor here that's effectively a 35 millimeter sensor. Like it's a, it's a good size sensor versus a little tiny iPhone sensor or a tiny phone sensor. So it needs to compensate for its inability to capture as much as what a big boy camera does. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll take one photo with the Sony, I'll take another photo with the Samsung S25 Ultra. I reckon that's probably if not the best, it's one of the best phones for astrophotography right now. And we'll use the astro mode in there. We'll do the 30 seconds, oh, sorry, the three minute long photo. So it's taking many photos over three minutes and stacking them all together. It's going to give me a raw file, but realistically a raw file won't stack it all for you. Like a raw file out of this versus a raw file out of a phone is very different. And we'll do the same thing with this. And I'll explain what I'm doing with this as I do it. With the phone, it's dead set easy. Okay, in the uh, Samsung now, automatically it's going to go for a night mode. You can see a little moon icon up there. Most phones will have some sort of night mode. And because we're on a tripod, we can maximize that. Um, we can go up to, we go to more on this, go to night. So we're putting it into night mode. It was going to do it automatically, but when we force it, we can change it. Go down there to eight seconds and we'll set it to max. And that's gonna give us about a 25 or so second photo. And we'll let it do that photo for 25 seconds. Now, if you know um, a little bit about astrophotography, you'll go, Shane, this phone has a 24 millimeter focal length. <coughs> so the rule of 500 or rule 600 tells us should be shooting somewhere between 20 and 25 seconds. So it's possibly going to have star trails, but because we're doing many photos and stacking them together, the star trails just won't be there. That photo is done. Now what we'll do is I'll show you just the regular astro mode. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the expert raw astro mode on this thing here. So we're going to go back into night, uh, go to more, go to expert raw, and we'll go to astro short we'll leave it on short so for astro on this phone here the icon up the top left hand corner there as you look at it with the stars that's the astro button um we'll go to focusing do we need to focus on this afc we're going to go center um what else we got here nothing really it's going to do most of this automatically hit the start button 
give it a countdown and it's going to be taking the photo all by itself. Years ago when I was teaching astrophotography, I would tell people, bring yourself a, a, a light of some sort or do this regularly enough that you can find where all the dials and stuff are in the dark because you're always in the dark. And two, there are dials and buttons all over DSLRs versus a phone. A phone's like a backlit screen. You just touch that backlit screen with a camera, the black camera with black buttons, black dials and a black night, you can't find anything. So knowing your camera already is going to be a bonus. Let's turn this on. Now we're shooting in manual. We're gonna shoot ISO on this, probably about 4,000. Um, manually focusing. So when you manually focus one of these, you want to find a distant star or a distant light a few hundred meters away at least and get the focus pinpoint on that. So it's a manual process. How long we shoot for is depending if you're a rule of 500 or a rule of 600 person. That is for the 600, the 600 divided by the focal length. The focal length that I'm going to use here is 24 millimeters. So it's going to be roughly the same as what the uh, Samsung is. Um, once you've got those set, you, all the other things that are around white balance, um, what else we've got here, noise reduction, all sorts of things that you can do with this. But the main difference is the manual setup and the large sensor. That large sensor will let us deal with noise a lot better. The dynamic range, that is how much it sees the dark stuff versus how much it sees the bright stuff. And we will see that difference between the, the phone and the camera uh, just in those two shots, the two, the, the ash, dedicated astro shot and a, a simple photo from this phone, this uh, camera. Look, already without any editing whatsoever, this is light years ahead of what this is doing. As we use phones for astrophotography, it's very, very, very simple to look at that end resulting image, especially if you're new to it and go, that is freaking amazing. I'm an astrophotographer and this is my tool. And it's totally fine to do that. Absolutely 100% fine to do that. But this, this is your gateway drug. This is your gateway drug to this. The way I would describe the use of this and the ability to do these sorts of photos with something like this is that this is designed for sharing. This is designed for the drones walking around looking at their phone all day. This is what this is designed for. This is designed to tell you the truth of what's happening out there. Neither of those is actually wrong. Like it, it's perfectly fine, but they're giving you different answers to the same question. So it depends on where you sit on it all. Is this okay? I think it's fine. I think this is the perfect thing to get started into astrophotography. You see, phones are where most people meet the night sky for the first time, these days especially. They're accessible to everybody they're in most people's pockets every day and all you need to do is get to a dark sky put this on a tripod and you're going to get some pretty bloody good photos this does not replace this this is an introduction to this when i first started doing astrophotography and i was getting out of bed at midnight one two three four o'clock in the morning going out and shooting the stars and getting some great images I didn't have a phone to do it with. I was doing it with this sort of a thing. And the investment for many, many people, the world is full of people who have invested a lot of money into gear like this to shoot Astro and get sick of it after the first season because they're lacking sleep versus people who are using it with like this for the first time, you're investing nothing besides your phone that you carry with you every day to get introduced to astrophotography. Once you've been doing this for a little while, go out there just for one season, you will see, you will look at a photo and you'll go, that was from a phone, that was from a DSLR mirrorless camera. You'll see it. If you head over to Facebook, if you're on Facebook, we have a pretty good community over there at uh, Shane Mostyn's Mobile Photography Bloody Legends. Have a look over there and you'll see so many talented people with astrophotography images taken with a phone it is perfectly acceptable to do it and if you're happy to stay there with a phone doing this sort of thing hats off to you good luck to you and it's a great way to do it but if you want to elevate it to the next level and it's a significant next level you may want to look at one of these sorts of things it doesn't have to be this sort of camera this is a few years old now but there are many many cameras out there that are going to bring you to that next level so if you're already someone who is out there taking 
astro photos with your phone you will be very surprised about how much difference you'll get out of this. There are friends of mine who have sold all of their camera setup, all their DSLR setup, and just using an iPhone now for photography. And that's fine, it's perfectly fine. You do you. <clears throat> you shouldn't be dictated to about how you take these sorts of images. <clears throat> there are certainly plenty of people out there online, let's just face it, online is kind of a cesspool of opinion, but when you are putting astro photos from a phone onto some astro photography page, you'll get, you'll get the trolls telling you that phones are no good for astro photography. You do you. If you're happy with what you're doing, you keep doing what you're doing. And if you want to escalate it just that little bit, no, not even a little bit, a lot, it might be time to start looking at one of these too. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'll see you next week.